everyone. Welcome to Toy Break, episode 349. I'm Aileen. I'm George. And Toy Break is your weekly internet show featuring news and reviews all about the wonderful world of toys, including, but never limited to, designer vinyl, plush, action figures, collectibles, uh, events, uh, whatever we can bring you in said wonderful world, that is what we aim to do. Let's start, as we always do, by thanking our site sponsors like Suburban Vinyl, DKE Toys, Three Coconut Monkey, Modern Brick Warfare, 3D Retro, and Tomonosuke. Yay! Thank you so much to all of our site sponsors. They help keep the uh, the site go site rolling and the the site lights on and all that good stuff. So go check out their links to their wares on toybreak.com. Uh, and now it's time for a new contest. Yes, uh, this contest is going to be brought to you by Squid Kids Inc. Um, it's uh, going to be a couple sets of mini Tendo things. So the first one um, we have. This is. Uh, one of each color of the blind of the blank tendos so it's a gray a white a, a gray a white a black and a glow in the dark i think or a gray a white a gold and the a whole glow set. in the dark i don't know there's four different ones in there and also a handmade um, blue rest in peace Ooh. Heisenberg resin Bergie. one um, so that's going to be the first winner and then there's a second winner who gets just the one of every color without the resin one whoa so two prizes tendos um and let's see what do you have to do to we had an art one last time so i feel like we should just do like what was your favorite nintendo game that's what i was gonna say so go to the forum at October Toy or at toybreak.com. October and, Toys uh, works, same forum. Go to the forum at toybreak.com and post in the contest section what was your favorite Nintendo game. Now are we going just Nintendo yes. Entertainment System? No, classic Nintendo. So no based, Super Nintendo, nope. no Nintendo 64, no uh, Wii. Yeah, like when we say only, that means no of the other ones. Wii you like to play. So... What was your favorite Nintendo game that you used to play? Or if you've never played it, go look up Nintendo games and find out which one was your favorite. Um, what was your favorite Nintendo game? And you can game? win one of those things. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Wow, you knew that really quickly. I don't know if it was my favorite, but that was one I played a lot. I was really into Micro Machines. 007-373-5963. I'm pretty impressed that That's you remember that. That's the code for Mike Tyson. I'm impressed. Uh, we should probably give him the deadline. Sure. How about April 15th? Sounds as good as any other day. And we will pick two winners uh, at random or yeah. based on what game no, they like. No, just two at random this time. <laughs> like, oh, they like that game. Put them in a box, pick out a name. Done. Thank you so much to everybody who's been entering the contest, and thank you to everybody who will enter the contest and go into the contest right now on the forum. It's an easy one this time, folks. Come on. So easy. All right, so we have been out and about lately, and uh, we went out to a couple events a couple weeks ago, and we hadn't gotten a chance to get to them until now, but we definitely wanted to tell you about uh, two of the things we did recently, first of which was Long Beach Comic Expo. This will be quick. <laughs> we went. All right. <laughs> so Long Beach Comic Expo is the second... Uh, so Long Beach Comic Con decided to do two shows a year. So they have Long Beach Comic Con in, I want to say it's like October, it's the end of the year. And then they added Long Beach Comic Expo in February. Oh, they're the same thing? So it's the same thing, but they have two different names. It's like Monster Palooza and Son of Monster Palooza. Right. It's the same thing, but they made two different names. I, I don't know, really know why. I guess to differentiate what time of year the okay. event is happening uh so we went out uh we hung out with the horsemen yes we did well they were in town and looked at the mythic legions we did uh prototypes which were gorgeous they of were of course and uh we looked around the rest of the con it was a little bit of a different con vibe than i usually get at cons okay how so there were weird booths with like people collecting signatures for things and like just there was like nail? a nail salon booth that was like doing your nails, like not in like a comic book kind of way. Just like, hey, do you want to have your nails done? It was a little weird. There was just some stuff that I was like, wow, I, that interesting. OK, not really what I expected to see at a comic book convention. Less comic booky 
more just stuff. There was a huge crowd of people outside of the convention, like cosplaying, cosplaying and looking at cosplayers. And then you walk inside the door and it was like a dead zone. But I'm, since I've never been to Long Beach Comic Con, the regular one in October, that one might be a little bit more full fledged because it's been going a little bit longer. So I wonder if that one has more going on there and then comic expo is growing i guess we'll have to see by going to the other one i guess we will uh and then not too long after that and not too long ago uh, i went down to star wars days at legoland which is a if you haven't been to legoland it's a whole land of lego as the name implies you've been to legoland yep quick review of that here's my quick review of legoland i went to legoland so it's not really a place you need to go. So every year, what Legoland in California does, they have the, the weekend, Star Wars Days weekend. And they have um, all sorts of things going on in the park. There's contests and prizes. The 501st is going around doing their droid hunt. Uh, you know, people are dressed up in as characters from the movies. There's a costume contest for kids. Um, there's probably even a ton of stuff. I don't even know what was going on in the park. Uh, the, the reason I was there is because I was part of the fan gallery where we have local builders come and bring Star Wars related models that we've built out of Lego. So that was pretty cool. And we had a, a nice showing, really, really good display of models. But uh, I've been to this event four other times, I think. This was the worst attended for the park that I have been to. Usually when you go to Star Wars Day, and they keep moving the date around, which I think is the problem. Usually when I go to Star Wars Days, it is packed, which is kind of weird because Legoland's usually pretty low key as far as attendance. I figured out how to describe Legoland. Oh, do it. Okay, so picture Disneyland. Okay. Right. And then add Lego. Okay, awesome. And then subtract magic. All the magic. Okay. All the rides. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the concessions. Um, All the concessions? No, Legoland has good concessions. They've won awards. Three quarters of the concessions. Subtract those. <laughs> um, the acreage. Uh huh. The attendance. Oh, those are subtractions. Okay, yeah. Subtract those. Um, what are we left with? And then add cobwebs. <laughs> and um, what's it called? Like sun bleach. Like sun. Uh... Like when things Bleachings. are bleached out yeah, in the sun. Yeah. Add that. So yeah. we're adding a few things and we're subtracting a few things. That's Legoland. Okay. So left with a bunch of white brick. But I think what the problem was, so usually it's so packed on Star Wars weekend days that it's kind of even hard to walk around the park. And it was not that at all this year. And I think the problem was they moved it about a month earlier than it usually is. So it missed most people's spring breaks. So... Hopefully, to increase performance at the park, attendance performance, hopefully they'll move it back towards April for the spring break crowd. Or they're trying to spread it out. Maybe they got enough people at spring break that they figured, let's try and get some people here at oh, this maybe. dead zone time. I don't think it worked. Yeah. I it's could be like, wrong. It's like a land. Uh, anyway, it was still fun. I enjoyed uh, hanging out and seeing people. I enjoyed seeing the 501st. I enjoyed the new Death Star. Cool. In the Star Wars land. That said, those blind were our events. Time. We have more events coming up. Let's do some blind box time. Do you guys know what time it is? Blind box time! So today's blind package <laughs> comes from uh, Button Lab. And uh, you might know Button Lab from the fine folks that make the 24-hour toy break buttons for us every year. Um, and you can hey. go to button-lab.com. And you can check it out. This is their um, artist series. This is series two, I believe. Series two. And inside each pack are four limited edition buttons. And they're just random from all of their <gasps> artists. I see so Dan Goodsell in here. 20 different buttons to collect with art by Camilla D'Erico, Bigfoot, Greg Mishka, Dan Goodsell, Buona Spoons, Amy Earls, Curry, Tim Olson, Wizards, Wizard Cleave, and Callie Fontanet, Fontecchio. Callie Fontecchio. I can't believe you braved all those names. Well, I probably butchered them all, too, but it's okay. You can also make custom buttons with Button Lab. You can get your own buttons made. You don't just have to buy artist buttons. Like, and they have really good prices and yeah. incredible turnaround times. So if you're looking for buttons for an event or for whatever reason you might want buttons, 
one maybe just to go out with your product I highly suggest button-lab.com at decon they had a sheet like you can just go to their booth and pick up like this piece of paper oh, that had little button templates on it and you can go around to different artists and have them draw for you and then take the sheet back to button lab and right there in the booth they make you the button that's so from smart. the artist stuff it was pretty cool i didn't cool. even know that was happening <laughs> Um, I got some good... Oh, you, we got a double. I got some good ones. Yeah, but mine's bigger. Oh, you got a big one. I got a little... I hate... I skate Mondays. I skate Mondays. Super fat. Oh, I got a Bigfoot button. That's a cool one. Oh, it's metallic, too. Oh, a Bigfoot button? Oh, mine's cooler. Why? Oh, yours is cooler. He's got a different face. And then my other two. I like your large one that you got. I got little Dan Goodsells, Mr. Toasts. Oh, it's a little Luke Skywalker one and an egg. Joe the Egg is a stormtrooper. Uh, who is this? Button Lab Artist Series 2. This is Greg Mishka. I got a Mishka one. And cool. this is Amy Earls. Let's see it. Pushedunder.com. It's cute. Oh, I like that. Very cool. I don't know how much these cost for a little pack of buttons, but... That's a good. Uh, it's I a good series. Bet you can find it at button-lab.com. Yeah, and I think they have an Etsy shop. Just click, go to their website, and then go. To, I think it's slash Etsy, or just go right to their site. I'm sure there's a link. And like these ones, I mean, all the buttons come out really well from Button Lab. That beautiful work, but the metallic ones are so cool. And even though they say there's 20 to collect, I wonder if that means because there's two from each artist, and there's 10 artists, so that's 20 different ones. But then. Right. It could be big or it could oh. be small. Like it could so be metallic. Technically, there could be forty. Like I wonder if there's like, if there's any like, or if there's only like this one only comes in this size. Well, no, because look, these are. Yeah, same one, different so, sizes. I oh, bet you there's trickery. like probably like a lot more than twenty if you wanted to really get them all. Trickery. Cool. Thanks, Button Lab. Thank Button you. Button-lab.com, and you can follow on Facebook, under Button Lab and Twitter and all those things. Awesome. And shall we on to reviews? Masters of the Universe Beastman Plush by Comic Images. There he is. That's Seven it. inch super deformed plush. They're $12. They also have Skeletor, Skeletor, Havoc Staff, Trap Jaw, Battle Cat, and She Ra. So here he is, super deformed plush. Um, I like his little, like, whip. Like, his little, like... It's like a shoelace. Yeah, it's really lame. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this. I'm not into these at all, personally. I kind of like that Skeletor's Havoc Staff, but I don't understand why the Havoc Staff is sold separately from Skeletor. And maybe I would understand if I was holding it in my hand. Is it just a plush Havoc Staff? Yeah, but it's... And then... But these are like twelve dollars, but the Havoc staff is like eighteen or seventeen. Well, is it like a big staff? Like it is must it... be. I don't. Well, have to I see don't it in understand. person at some point. Who That's knows? the thing. I need to see it in person. I guess. Um, all right. He's super squished because he was obviously in a box at some point for shipping and packing. I think this is just how he is. So like, no, his hair's very squished on his face. Like, like squished. No, I think this is just how he is. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, that's a little better. It's definitely better back there. All right, well. It's plain. It's okay. I personally don't think I would pay $12 for that, but. If someone the... gave it to me, I wouldn't be sad. Well, hey, there's one. Hey, here's one. Look at me not being sad about him. All right. Something else. Let's check it out. This is pretty cool. Um, do you want to... Speaking of Masters of the Universe... Do you want to try to figure out how that opens? I never uh, could figure out those child safety locks. I think we just cut the bag open. Or do you squeeze it and it goes the other way? Oh. There you go. See, I knew there was a trick. It's not really a trick. It just opened. <laughs> All right, so I'm probably going to butcher everything here, but... Motulos? I think is what this is called. So it's from Nerd One or Nerd Oni, however you prefer. It's a three and a half inch Sofubi castle inspired by Neklos Fortress and Castle Grayskull. And 
I believe it goes for around $40, although there have been a couple different versions of the castle. I've never I've... seen a drawstring plastic, like, crappy plastic bag before. Do you like it? No, it's weird. So I think, uh, depending on which version you get from which outlet, it could vary in price a little bit. Okay, so the one we got was is the gray one. Look at it. And the Goodness. nice thing is it comes with the little dude. Look at how cool the castle is. Oh, how many bags is <laughs> Another there? bag. Jeez. Oh, look at it. Hmm. What are your feelings? Cutest little castle ever. Hi. I'm an adorable castle. Um, I really like the castle part. I don't really care for that dude. I'm not a huge fan of like hand cast little dudes like this. Like this the the little the rubber that's always hand cast is like a weird feel to me. I don't really like hmm. I don't like it. It's fine. Like the sculpting's good. It's a little large. It's a little bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Like hmm. he's I'm I guess I'm used to muscle man size and he's a bit bigger than a muscle man would be. He's a little bit more substantial. Um which is weird because the muscle men the kini the kinika men from Japan that the muscle men were based on were actually a little bit smaller. So they're even smaller than what we're used than to. Than muscle men, yeah. I think somehow they were like muscle men were a little bit bigger. Um but this guy is like quite large. I don't know. He looks good with the castle, I guess. I could see getting him in different colors and stuff. I mean, I'm glad it's in flesh. I wouldn't want it in a different color. That feel, though, I, I know what you're talking about. Like, even though there's nothing wrong with the way it feels, it just doesn't feel right for somebody who's always collected muscle or always collected right. monster in my pocket. And even mo like your mon your muscle feels weird to me sometimes because I'm used to monster in my pocket. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's whatever you collect, so then that other thing is like, oh, that... This is probably more like Monster in My Pocket, right? The softness of it? Yes, but it has like a... Almost like a... a velvety... There's a it's a it's there's feel? a material that's used in special effects that has this... That it's this stuff that they use for specialty the, costumes and stuff. And the this squishability is, the is probably right, but the feel, like the actual tactile feel of it feels a little bit different satiny feels satiny it's nicely sculpted though yeah it's a cool little figure and i like that you get the figure and the castle for this set i believe was around 40 dollars i remember correctly cool yeah so keep an eye out for that online again that was from nerd one now uh we have a couple things in our mailbag that we need to get to Let's get to it then. Let's. Which one do you want to do first? Anything. I do How like that, that they guy? made a little clip, like a legit like bank a little bottom. close on the bottom, so it's not just that like open hole thing. That's kind of cool. It's a nice, nice touch. Yeah. This thing first. Sure. So we got two packages from an artist named Squish. Was it right? Squish. Yeah, Squish, aka Ray. Um, is one of these from Squish? And it's Squishy Puss, Squishy Push dot, Squishy Puss dot com, or mm. under Instagram it's Squishy Puss and Twitter it's Squishy Puss. Um, this was the guy. Um, apparently he's an artist in Atlanta. Here. Thank you. Um, and he puts these things up around Atlanta. It's half bulldog, half octopus, and um, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know what this little toy is going to... He said there's a, he sent a toy and a piece of art. So here's the piece of art. That's pretty awesome. Thank you so much for sending that. Yeah, it's pretty rad. And obviously we don't know what's in this box yet. I'd be happy if I saw this around the streets. Would you try to steal it? I probably would. Look, you don't even have to now. I don't know how this... I don't understand boxes. They're squares. You just put stuff in them and... Ship it. Where's the... The flappy bit? Uh, did I just give myself a paper cut? Oh. It's a little squishy. 
that's amazing. I've actually sculpted something that has this similar shape to it. It's funny. It never you, got made. When you showed me this piece, yeah. I thought of the piece that you're thinking of that didn't get made. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's got a very similar bottom. And now that you pull and that out. And now it's here. Oh, it's cute. That's hilarious. Um, they also didn't, Kid Robot did those little, like, ghost guys, the stacking ghosts. Oh, that yeah, like the that doppelgangers. Too. Yeah. Um, this looks like it's all sculpted, though, not over something. So, yeah, it's cool. Nice. Good. How good. cool that he's got a cool little character that he, like, he's making in a different medium. Making with different mediums. Yeah, neat. Thank you so much for all the goodies. Uh, and did you see his sites and everything? Yeah, it was, Okay, uh, Squishy Puss. Squishypuss.com. Link in the show notes, toybreak.com. And he also Super sent us a crossword puzzle to be able to do that as well. Oh, sweet. So if we want to do the crossword puzzle, we can. Okay, good. Can you save that for me for later? <laughs> do you want me to like do this part? It? Yeah, the boxes. No, that box I can figure out. That's an easy box. Sometimes the boxes are tricky. So let's see what this one is. Do we know who it's from yet? Um, well, the top says Caesar Diaz customizations. What? Oh, is there a note in here or anything? What? What? Whoa! What is that? Look at that one. What? Oh, they're all Ewoks. Oh, this is on. Warning: This is not a toy. All right. So what we have here is. Oh, wait. From... Here's a note. Here's a note. Okay. Wait, everyone. There's a note. We found the note. Caesar Diaz. First one here is Mr. Cthulhu, which I believe is that guy. He's a private eye investigator in the Lovecraft universe. Sculpted in Super Sculpey, cast in resin, and painted with acrylics. acrylics. Uh, the second figure is an Ewok, mashup of an Ewok with a pug, which is this one here. Jangles the Pug Walk. The piece was 3D <laughs> sculpted using ZBrush and then printed using a MakerBot replicator. Look at him. That's awesome. Cute. A Cthulhu detective. Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Nice. He's got a little tail and everything. It's adorable. Um, also note... Looks like it was sculpted over a dunny, probably. Mm, it's dunny Dunny body -ish. Oh, nice. So you can bottom. open at the bottom. Nice. So we can look at this without... 3D sculpted. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, hello, little... What's your name? Jangles the pug walk. So one, there's one is the regular color and one is the metallic is the edition. Regular. And the metallic. Now, nice. I'm just going to make a comment here based on some, oh, these are so cute. These are super cute. People who like pugs seem to really like pugs. Yeah, everybody that has a pug really likes their pug. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Everybody that I've known with a pug, like every pug I've ever known, is absolutely fabulous and wonderful, and they've been amazing, amazing creatures. And then this but last like, one. I don't see a lot of people making, like, corgi mashups. Well, here's my Basinji Stormtrooper. What is that? This is a hooded trooper, hooded stormtrooper. Uh, he was also Sounds 3D like printed and me. cast in clear resin with a pinch of pinch of color pigment. Um, he has all colors of the rainbow, but he sent us the orange one. I like the orange one. You can see more of his work at mycustomations.com. Link in the show notes. Or you can follow him on Instagram at customations underscore art. Well, you can follow him. I can't. Oh. Oh. So mycustomations.com. And that, again, was Caesar. Caesar Diaz. Ewoks, always a win for me. Super cute. I This is really nicely done, the translucent. There's a couple of cute little buttons in there, too. For the hooded uh, trooper. Oh, those are really cute. Oh, look at the little pug. Oh, that pug's amazing. It's cute. It's a good little pin. All right, and Cthulhu Detective. I really like the... I don't know why. I like the idea, and I like the execution, because it's got a really super cute vibe going. And I like super cute, like, chibi Cthulhu's. But I also like his jauntily placed hat. And I think if this pug had a jauntily placed detective hat, you would take the world by storm. Okay. You would take the world yeah. by storm. Yeah, you would like own the world. This pug, detective hat, jaunty angle. Okay. We have, <laughs> we have one more bag to go. We one do more box have one more to. box. Let's 
All right, this All one's right. heavier. Last box. This one's heavy. There's that word again. Where's that? Packing peanut. Those look like the edible kind. And I don't know who this is from because there's no name on it. Oh, Yudoki? Then it's a bunch of surprises. We love surprises. It looks like a six pack of soda. Rummy Cola. Never give up the booty. This is a game. Isn't it? Or is this a figure? I don't know. There's what no is note. That? There's no note, and there's six different ones, it looks like. Six? Look, here's a root beer. Oh, figure. Figure. It's figure. This packaging is amazing. This packaging is amazing. Um, there, there was no note in the box, so I have no idea who sent them. I feel like um, they emailed or Facebooked or something, and I don't seem to have a record of it for some reason. Shreveport, Louisiana. It could potentially be because I had an email meltdown and lost about two weeks of emails, and I rebuilt pretty much everything, but if it was in there, I truly apologize. Um, well, that's also a good time to say, like, if you do want to send anything to show, um, you are always welcome to send stuff in. Absolutely. Um, you can get the, the address on the contact page. Yeah, go to toybreak.com. There's a contact page. Uh, it has the address to send something in, and we can, of course, look at it and review it on the show. But always include a note in the box. Please. That always helps. And if you're going to contact us, email us, info at toybreak.com. Um, email the contact is also, it's all on the contact page. Um, don't message us on Facebook and stuff like that because we'll have no way to like Facebook. keep track of that. Like, don't do business is not, on Facebook. Yeah, that's not a place for business. Um, but feel free at any time to contact us through the contact section on toybreak.com. But let's look at this amazing packaging. Yeah. Um, it looks like there's six different ones. It was a six pack of soda. Oh, I get it. It's a little six pack of thing. It has the, you know, the pop top, but it's not obviously one that's going to pop. You it's don't a pull pop tab it one. You don't pop it. You just pull it from the bottom <gasps> and release the character. Um, release the character. All right. Fizz Kids by Carbonation Toys. Carbonationtoys.com. Uh, meet the Fizz Kids. What happens when fuzzy wuzzy toys meet an explosion of carbonated bubbliness? <sighs> These are pretty amazing. I mean, all right, so. Huh. Those are. Oh. <laughs> His lights oh, burn. you're going to like this one. Switch. All right, so I'm going to open Alien Limeade. Out of this world, lemon lime, grooveliciousness. Oh, I do like this one. All right, so I've got rummy cola. You pull it open, and then I guess you can just. It's a rat. Can you just pop the bottom? It's a pie rat. Uh, or is there a little, oh, there's a little piece of tape or something? Oh, mine didn't have tape. You carefully release him from his little plastic bell jar. <gasps> Look at him. Now, I gotta say, brilliant packaging. It looks amazing. It has one downfall from what I've seen from flipping these open just here quickly on the show. Yes. Um, I think I know what you're going to say. Is if the character comes loose like this guy did, you end up with a very dinged paint up, paint marked thing. Which then if a customer gets this, they might look at it and go, well, that's no good. Even though it didn't really harm the figure. Yeah, the figure's fine. Um, let me see. Because a couple of the other ones had you know, the same. Is, this guy... Only had one little mark. Well, look at him. He's got it. Oh yeah, all, all around over. The, um, but head. it's funny. Like it doesn't hurt the figure at all. It just makes it look dinged up on there. Dinged up on this thing, um, which is unfortunate because it's a very cool packaging style. I wish there was maybe a way to hold it in. How long his tail is. That's a great little figure. I mean, these are cool figures. Nice solid PVCs. Yeah. Let's open a couple of the other ones. It's cool. It looks are. like they're trying to actually make, you know, an original line of characters. Now, the only problem with, uh, what's his name? Rummy Cola. Is he not stand? He's not really standing. I feel like if that tail had been just a touch lower or out more, it could act as that third point, but maybe it, it was, could be our it, table. I was going to say, maybe it was, or maybe the table's too soft. These feet, it's pretty small. You could always put it back. I can Onto that. Ta-da! I feel like it probably just got warped 
in it's the quite possible. in production, and I bet you that's how used to make it stand. They do have a little piece of tape. Oh, my other one didn't. That you can kind of just pull through. This is the cranked cola cat, four times the caffeine, half the taste. This is really funny. Carbon carbonation toys, carbonation toys. Now I believe I just clicked on the site. Um, I just clicked on one of the random toys. I clicked on this zombie guy, and he was fifteen dollars on their site. So I'm assuming they are all a similar price. Look at him; he's funny. His little leg. Oh, it's broken. It's broken. So he's dragging it. Dragging his tail behind him, or his leg behind him. Oh. All right. Let's see how much. Great design. Else. Do you have the cat? Oh, the cat. Cat's fun. He's right there. Are these all double checking? Yeah, it looks like they're all fourteen ninety nine. What's he holding? I don't know, like a. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can't tell. You. Is it a laptop? Is it a modem? Is it a? I have no idea what he's holding. That's funny though. I like the way they did the tail. They made it flat, but cut out and jittery. Yeah, like a, it's cool. like a comic, like a comic cat. These are oh, it's that guy. Bone Crusher root beer. Carbondale County Jail. Ha <laughs> ha. Carbondale. What's that guy? And the last guy is a little Chihuahua, a Chihuahua dog, vicious oh dog, water with a bite. It's got the little separate collar that like. It's too big and it just kind of hangs around him because he's a tiny little chihuahua with a giant head. And that one, unfortunately, did get a little rub from the that packaging. That did. Uh, is that from the packaging or is that from this? It's from the way it's packaged. Mm. Because he's kind of sitting in there and then the collar's right. rubbing on his skin. So it's These are cool. Things to learn as you go, as you move on. There's probably a story to who everybody is in Carbondale. If that's a place if that's a thing I, I just really like this packaging though like it's really impressive that's pretty cool all right so you guys go check it out you can go to again it's carbon nation one n carbonation toys.com and uh you can buy all these fine fellows really impressive that package really impressive shop. packaging i like that they tried something new i mean and it becomes like you know the, and the you guy, have to keep like, that packaging like that's part of the the toy i mean i don't know why you wouldn't want to though like it's great like even if you kept him in his little test tube i like it george is in you know what else you're in for events <laughs> All right, we've said it before, and we will say it again. Emerald City Comic Con, the premier pop, I'm sorry, the premier comic book and pop culture convention in the Pacific Northwest at the Washington State Convention Center in Seattle, Washington on March 27th to 29th, emeraldcitycomiccon.com. If you're going to be there on Friday, watch for us. We're going to be there on Friday. We're going to walk around. And if you see us, please come say hi. Uh, if we see you, we'll say hi. I don't know how we'll do that. We don't know. Them. We're just going to say hi to everybody. Oh, okay. High fives. I won't Highs be doing that. Everybody. But I'm very excited. I'm very excited to finally uh, check out Emerald City Comic Con. And uh, we're going to take George to the Space Needle. It's going to be fun. Are you excited? Stoked. Thank you, stoked. <laughs> you know what else is happening that weekend? No, tell me. Monster Palooza. It's at the Marriott Burbank Hotel and Convention Center in Burbank, sunny Burbank, California, March 27th to 29th. Monsterpalooza.com. That is a fun, uh, like, horror, scary, creature effects, special effects, uh, art inspired, all sorts of really fun, uh, like, kind of gory and art inspired creations. It's a neat convention. Can I tell them about something else cool coming up? Sure. But it's coming up longer away than you like to talk about. Just do it. All right. So something fun that I've been working on for a little while now. Uh, myself, Aileen Gaspar, and my partner, uh, Ace, Ace Kim, who runs from bricks to boffins.net, fbtb.net, which is a Lego fan site for licensed properties. Uh, we have combined forces and we have made magical things happen. 
And what are those magical things, you might ask? Bricks LA! Fanfare. Balloons, streamers, <laughs> confetti, it's falling. Only on you, though. Only on me. Only on Nothing on you. No. So Bricks LA is the premier Southern California uh, Lego fan convention. And we're going to have our first one. <laughs> the premiere of the premiere. We're going to have it on May 16th and 17th. Uh, you guys can come by. We're starting out small. It's a, it's a building year because it's our first year. And uh, we have big plans. Building, get it? For Oh, because it's out of Lego. Because it's Lego. Uh, we have big plans for next year, but that doesn't mean to, to skip it this year. It's going to be super fun. There's going to be over 6,000 square feet of public displays. Of, uh, we call them mocks, my own creation. So it's, it's models built out of Lego. All sorts of different themes like space and micro scale and... Uh, comic TV book. and comic books and things like that. And we'll also have some vendors vending Lego type sets and accessories and third party accessories and all sorts of interesting brick related things. And if you yourself are an a foal and you are interested in coming what to What did you call them? a foal Oh, I thought you said something else. An adult fan of Lego. I you thought could, you, said you could something be an a hole An adult hobbyist of Lego. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's a thing. So if you're interested in attending the private portion of the event, if you've ever been to a Lego event before, uh, there's public portions and then there's private portions. And the private portions, uh, you pay a little bit more and you get to display your models and put them into the competitions that we have to earn trophies and prizes. And you get to participate in the uh, drawings and you get to do games and activities and build lasting friendships. Or you can come as an attendee and judge those models and decide who wins. It's true. So if you want to come as So do you want to visitor, build models and bring them, or do you want to judge them? That's up to you. <laughs> you be the judge. I'll be the judge. You're going to be the judge? I'm going to be going. <laughs> I'm judging everybody. That's what I do. So check it out, BricksLA.com. We will bring you more information as we get closer to the event. Uh, oh, yeah, and it's going to be at the Pasadena Convention Center in the lower level of the, of the uh, conference center right now, and we're next year bigger bigger and better but come see it this year it's gonna be awesome and that is it for episode 200 and no 349 you know what that makes next episode 350 <sighs> that's a lot of episodes so it's 349 no, 350 is a lot. 349, anybody can do that. You can check the show notes at toybreak.com to watch all of those 349 past episodes and all the special things that have been in there and goodies and doodads. And you can also join the contests and the browsing toy discussions in the forum at toybreak.com. You can also support the show by doing what you do every day anyway, which is shopping on Amazon. Just go to toybreak.com, click the Amazon link first, do your shopping as normal. We really appreciate everybody who's been taking the time to do that. You can also call and leave us a voicemail at 818 I good. You can email us info at toybreak.com. You can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash toybreak. You can check out our toy briefs, toy girls, and full episodes at youtube.com slash toybreak. You can follow us on Twitter at toybreak. You can follow me at Aileen Gaspar. At George Gaspar on Twitter. And uh, real quick before we go, I want to say thank you to everybody for the well wishes from the last episode who uh, were wishing that I, I got better. And I am getting better. I think I still sound a little... No, it sounds fine. No, I sound okay? Okay, good. I'm better! Yay! Yay! It wasn't at all better with the phone. <laughs> and on that note, we will see you next week. Same toy time, same toy channel. Bye!